Then, as always, we have our Rachel Horns with our lesson and meditation. So, real quick, we'll go through our, uh, let's see, let's do our new building affirmation together. The next owners of this beautiful building are ready for purchase in this now moment. We are ready to move. Let's do that one more time. The next owners of this beautiful building are ready to purchase in this now moment. We are ready to move. Thank you, Rachel. And I'd like to invite Audrey up for our inspiration of the day. Good morning. Good morning. The word for today is timeless. And the affirmation, in timeless moments in the silence, I discover myself anew. I relax and let go, withdrawing my attention from my surroundings. Breathing deeply and rhythmically, my mind relaxes and my heart opens. I enter my sacred inner sanctuary. Here I have no awareness of time. I hear no words. I think no thoughts. I feel no separation. There is only the richness of silence, the awesome presence of infinite life, love, and wisdom. I am one with this presence. The time and attention I devote to my regular practice of meditation builds deep abiding peace and clarity in my consciousness. In these timeless moments, I discover I have all I need, enough strength, understanding, love, and time to progress along my path and accomplish all that is mine to do. And the scripture from Revelation 21, 1, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The word for today is timeless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such powerful words that we have. Oh, that, that was just what I needed today. Thank you. <laughs> so join me now in our sacred exchange. We know as in unity as the energy that we give, the, the, the dollars that we give to help uh, this move forward, that comes back to us now. Uh, I, I've seen it in my life personally. Um, I know many others here who've seen it in theirs. So, uh, for those of you that aren't here today, you can visit unitywithoutcome.org and click the donate button. It's easy to find, super secure. Uh, you can text GIVE to 833 or as always, we love checks and snail mail. It's nice to see something other than a bill coming in the mail once in a while. Uh, at PO Box 1207, Joplin, Missouri, 64802. And we will do our, our little, uh, do our prosperity lesson first, and then we shall have come up. Go ahead and take your offerings in your hand if you have it. Be good my engagement, so I guess it's my phone. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful.
that. Now we will go ahead and dedicate our offerings. Please help dedicate them with me. These tithes and offerings are dedicated to the will and work of Spirit through unity of doctrine for the highest good of all. It's really cool that everybody up here remembers that without the slides up there. That's, that's really cool. You guys are perfect. I don't know if you hear it enough. Uh, so you get break for me for a few minutes. We've got a great book with meditation, we'll have a special song, we'll have the lessons, and I'll be up here for some announcements afterwards.
and allowing our spiritual essence to envelop that space. We remember that the spaces of joy and laughter and creativity that have landed in our heart space. We give gratitude. We breathe in. Thank you. We breathe out. Thank you. 
synchronous with our breath that we breathe in anew and we release all that is ready to go appreciating the lessons that they have taught us the seeds that they planted within us the inspiration or determination that we feel having moved through that resistance, the restriction, the idea of separateness. As we hear the tone roll, we allow the sound from the tone roll to shower over us, allowing its vibration to move our energy and our vibrational level to a higher resonating space. Sit in that time and space and silence. When we end the silence without question, without hesitation, we go into the silence. Oh. As we gently bring our awareness back into this time and into this space, we come back lighter, not only carrying less burden, but being filled and enlightened. Knowing that as we move into the silence, that is our space to receive. 
And as we practice this, more and more, the clearer the guidance becomes. So as we take a nice deep breath in, and release. We allow ourselves, the cells that make up our body and the energy that moves through each and every one of these cells, we allow it to continually vibrational strength at a higher rate. Knowing that the faster that this energy moves, it moves us in that upward spiral. So it's with gratitude, possibly a smile on our face, that we come back into this space. Open and ready to release, knowing that greatness is ready to fill this space. For this time, the sacred time of meditation, we express gratitude. And so it is.
It is so good to be here. And yes, you may have a little bit of tech stuff going on today, but that's not going to stop us, is it? No. No, no way. No way. It was me. <sighs> I will practice holding my microphone where it should be. <laughs> I wanted to start by sharing the fourth Sunday of Lent reading today. Jesus let go of fear. How many of us have been there before? I'll be the first person Yes, 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 yes. In the space of being ready to let go of the fear. We see in how Jesus refused to be swayed by the opinions of others. But how did he keep from being afraid? as his situation was We see his fearlessness most vividly in his final week, yet he demonstrated a sense of divine protection and well-being throughout his ministry. So after a busy day of teaching and healing amid the crowds, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he headed into the Sea of Galilee. Now this one reminded me of my husband. After a long day at work, work working two jobs, <laughs> he promptly fell asleep. I would imagine Jesus was probably pretty tired. Remember guys, he was human too. Oblivious to the growing storm that was swamping the boat, the disciples cried out, Lord, save us! And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds of the sea. And there was a dead calm. And that's from Matthew chapter 8, verses 25 and 26. And on a similar evening, Jesus sent the disciples to the other side of the lake. While he went up to the mountaintop, to pray. Now, I know that we don't have to biologically have children to know that we have probably had this experience with young ones from time to time, right? That we are teaching, that we are constantly in that teaching them about life mode. And this is where Jesus was. He said, y'all go to this side of the sea, and I'm going to go take a break around the mountain over here. Another great example of our way showing us how to do human life. But again, the boat was tossed in the waves, and about dawn, the disciples saw Jesus walking towards them on the water. Walking on that water. And they were terrified, saying, it's ghosts. And when I read this, I thought, I actually might have been, not to be punny or anything, but in the same boat with them, <laughs> a little worried about someone walking towards me on the water. And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then Peter decided to try walking on the water himself. He stepped out of the boat, and he actually took a few steps on the water before the fear overtook him. And he cried out, Lord, save me! And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have a little faith, why do you doubt? Peter was doing just as Jesus was doing until he remembered that he thought he couldn't do it. He thought he couldn't do it. Thoughts become the truth of our lives. And Peter shows us this. Peter represents faith. Now, as Jesus clearly saw, faith is the antidote to fear. So the opposite of fear is Faith. Faith. Yes, and we will 
touch on this again. The opposite of fear is faith. Yes, it is faith. So when we find ourselves in that space of fear, and we look at how Jesus let go of that emotion, that feeling that we get fear, we look to our faith. We look to see where our faith is and what our faith is in. So within the Beatitudes, Jesus released fear of persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And most of all, Jesus did not fear reprisals from the authorities of his day. Kind of like a teacher not caring about what the principal has to say. It's kind of no big deal. But he had a message to share, and he knew that that message would change the world, that it was a message that people needed to hear. So he let go of that fear. And he said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, as he enumerated the ways that they failed to practice what they preached. You snakes. I am not have time imagining him saying this, but you, you snakes, you brood of vipers. How can you escape being sentenced to hell? Now, in unity, we teach that both heaven and hell are spaces within our consciousness. That we can visit hell ten times a day, but we can go to heaven twenty times a day. Right? Right. Yes. It is our mind space. It is our consciousness. And it's where we choose to be. Sometimes it feels more comfortable and familiar to be in that space of hell. When we remember our true divine location, where the GPS is always trying to send us is to heaven. Where we can see from that higher Easter view that I've been happen speaking about for a full year, moving us into the fifth dimension, where that energy I've been speaking about, it resonates and it moves at a higher speed so that we can see past the water and walk on it. We see past the storm and we calm it. When we see past any of those human obstacles, whether it be a human or a few humans, whether it be a job that we feel stuck in, whether it be the repetitiveness of trying to get your kid to listen to you, <laughs> all of us find ourselves in little spaces like this. And it goes across this gigantic spectrum. And I just want to remind everybody that it's valid. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what the situation is, it is valid. So as we look into this week and into the idea of releasing, last week I mentioned how much Charles Fillmore loved the Lent season. Because he celebrated this time of release, knowing that as you release, you're opening space for new thoughts, for true thoughts, for the thoughts that can change your mind. He, I love you, Charlie, held out until he saw what was healing, okay? Human. Human. But when we see it and when we're ready, he was releasing those thoughts of doubt. He let those go. And he then took on this practice of meditative time. And in that space, that timeless space that we heard about today, going to headquarters, he leaves the battle behind. And he healed himself as well. Because it wasn't just Merlin who had the power, and it's not just Charles Fillmore, and it's not just Jesus. We all have this 
power. We all cannot shut the spark off. We can't do it. And this is the time to release any entrapment or resistance or idea that anything has the power over us to stop that release. Now, when we see something needs to be changed in someone else, who's been there? Check yourself first. Right? Now, just to be right up here, car troubles, so we're talking. I'm talking about the space of spiritual maturity and within that space, and as you grow in spiritual maturity, you grow in self awareness. And I was speaking to her about recognizing a trigger or a child that might be getting pushed on somewhere in me. And I told her that as you gain greater self awareness, in that moment, you say, oh, but this isn't about that person. What is being called to be healed from within? So something within has found agreement with the appearance and is simply providing a reminder to look for the good, the God. Discover the negative residing within our consciousness. So just as we did in that meditative practice, and we acknowledge those things that may be heavy on our hearts and they can be heavy in our minds, we recognize those and we replace those through compassion, through giving in love, through feeling and healing. We replace it with the truth of our being. I love this reminder when I read, I can rest in the assurance that wherever I find myself, God isn't just with me, God is within me. And I am here by divine appointment. Instead of wasting time asking why, I insist that there is something for me to gain at every turn. Because we look for the good, we look for the God. This is one of the most things, powerful things, sorry mom, I'm just stuttering over here, that my grandma taught me, bringing me unity, saying, yeah, sometimes things are going to hurt, you're not going to look so great, but the truth of the matter is that God is working within it all. So look for the good, and you're going to find God's presence. So, with the encouragement to practice this meditative space more and more. It's coming through our daily work, it's moving through our lunch time, it's coming from the filmers. I want to start this movement space, this time of movement, with the prayer of faith. And then we're going to stand up. And we're going to do a walking, singing meditation as a reminder that meditation looks different for everyone in different moments. Sometimes we need that meditative space out in nature to sit beside a stream. Sometimes we need to be sitting with our legs crossed and our arms out. Now my hippies don't really love that. So we're going to practice another form of meditation. The prayer of faith. God is my help in everything. God does my ever hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind. And loving too. All things I am, can do, and be through Christ the truth that is in me and you and you and you and you and everyone here. 
God is my help that can't be sick. God is my strength unfailing quick. God is my all I know. No fear. Since God and love and truth are here. And with that, This is going to be more of a chanting song, and it's called Sanctuary. And it's about opening ourselves up to be that sanctuary, that sacred space that we feel and move and let God's activity move us in the divine path that is out there. So I invite you to stand up, and I will sing it and actually catch on to the words. Sing it. Now, I want to let you know, my vision, I want anybody to know where you feel moved to walk in this room, okay? Wherever you feel moved to walk. You can start moving. Lord, prepare me to be
really something else really special. Thank you. I have a few announcements. Um, bear with me, like I said, I've been here a month, so people who fill this sheet out, I'm going to have to help me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, first off, we're going to give a shout out to Cat Bell, and I know Cat Bell is a lot of our web and YouTube presence. Um, is there something in particular we're giving our shout out for this week other than general awesomeness? Well, I don't know if anybody's noticed the new graphics up here, looking sharper, more professional. Has anybody checked out our website recently? Yes, she has spent countless hours on our website. She has been working in the check on Facebook and sharing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's turn your homework this week to share at least two posts because we have amazing reminders on there with great graphics. It's beautiful, and she has put so much work on this. So I just want to give a shout out. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Kay. Uh, also, please start bringing your candy in for Easter eggs. Um, is there a certain place that we were all, I'm guessing, on the big happy Easter table in the back of the sanctuary with the big pink basket? Let's fill that up so that those kids can have lots of Easter candy. No, we Wednesdays and Sundays. Okay. So Wednesdays at 1 o'clock and then Sundays uh, before or after the service. Perfect, thank you. See how well this works as a team. Also, we have our Easter egg hunt, March 31st. It is free and open to the public. Uh, so that will be after service. Yes. All right. So. If you know some families, friends, with kiddos that want some Easter eggs, it's a great time. Sam done it since he was tiny. Um, it's just a, a, a lovely, lovely experience. And we'll keep our fingers crossed and say some positive affirmations that the weather's going to be as beautiful as it is today. Uh, we have an opening for a Sunday school teacher. Um, so any, uh, this will be Sunday school elementary ages. Um, so if you know somebody or if you're feeling the call, um, if, if helping to guide children and, and kind of prepare them for how they fit into to the world and unity and how spirituality can be a part of their lives and help affirm with them who they are, you know, where their place is in the world, um, that's an opening and we'd love to have you uh, so talk away from them. And uh, speaking of children, there's some great energy coming back into the room. Um, also, don't forget our food pantry. Um, I know that it, the sun is starting to shine in here. I think that, you know, we, as the weather starts to get a little bit warm, and so uh, people don't think about it as often as they do whenever it's cold outside. But um, people, people who have needs, those needs don't necessarily go away just because the weather changes. So um, that's another way we can share our blessings with our community. Um, our friends of Unity meets Wednesdays at 1 p.m. If that works out with your work and day schedule, please be here. Um, I'm sure it's a wonderful group. I unfortunately haven't had a chance to. I see Easter eggs that are going to be filled. Okay. And I imagine it's probably going to be the friends of Unity. Shout out. Uh, there we go. I love too. That sounds fun. Maybe it's good that I can't make it on Wednesday because probably not as much can you go into the eggs. <laughs> As always, uh, you know, community was founded on prayer, um, so we have, there is a spot on our webpage now for prayer support, um, so this is important, and I, I assume that this is not just prayer support for yourself, but just prayer support for others, really any, anything that you need prayer support for. I know that uh, through some of the most traumatic and some of the most wonderful times in my life, I go to prayer. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, I need something, it can be a thank you, it can be pray with me for blessings, give other people strength. There's many, many ways that prayer can affect your world and our world together. Um, that's unityofjoplin.org slash prayer. Uh, as always, prayer chaplains are available after the service if you need some in-person prayer support. Um, that, all of the announcements we have this week, are there any that I have left out? Awesome. You did ask them. Yes. All right. I'm All right. Uh, if you'll join me in saying the children's blessing for these wonderful little bundles of light around the room. Children, you are a perfect child of God, and God and I love you just the way you are. And I'm going to say to all of you and your children, too, so I hope they do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave the candy out of these guys. See you next time.
now we'll circle up uh, the peace song and our prayer for Have a wonderful